Well, greetings. Pastor Eric here from Zion Lutheran Church in beautiful Redmond. We're on day 24, our last day of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. It's been a wonderful journey with you. I've really appreciated your time, effort, interest, and uh, growth as we've spent some time with this wonderful letter of encouragement. Today we just have the last verses where Paul writes these words. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am now an ambassador in change. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. And then he has the final little instructions. <clears throat> so that you may know how I am and how I'm doing, Tychicus will tell you everything. He's a dear brother and faithful minister in the Lord. I am sending him to you with this letter. Um, for this very purpose, to let you know how we are and to encourage your hearts. Peace be to the whole community and love and faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you, all you who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. Tender, wonderful letter um, ending with those great words of encouragement. He wanted to make sure... <clears throat> as he's writing his last communication to them, that every word counted. He wanted to make sure that they were ready for life without him because he had been there 10 years before. Remember, he had spent three and a half years there, and he wanted to make sure that they were ready for life in his absence. Now, let's review for just a moment um, these chapters. Paul had spent three and a half years there, set up the church, um, converting many Jews and Gentiles to the way of Jesus. And if you remember from these last week, Ephesus <clears throat> was a very religious, although a very pagan city. It was a rich cosmopolitan world where Jews, Gentiles, Persians, people from all over the world at that time did their banking and economic trading. 14 different temples to 14 different pagan gods. Some of the followers of Nicholas, the Nicolaitans, said <clears throat> that there is a disjunction between the spirit and the body, so that what's important is what you do with the spirit, not what you do with the body. So you can live lives, the Nicolaitans were saying, of unrestrained indulgence. So they had their drunken parties, they practiced adultery, they ate meat offered to idols, they went to the huge temple of Artemis with the hundreds of temple prostitutes there. That's where Paul went to establish one of the first Christian churches. He went there to proclaim Jesus as the way, as the only way of salvation in this pagan world. That's where Paul went, where people needed him most. Remember, <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago, we talked about that church sign that said the church should go to hell. Well, that's the hell that Paul went to. Paul went and established a church there in the hell of Ephesus. So he's writing from his prison cell. He had told them in the first three chapters the assurances of the Christian faith. He told them in the last three chapters the uh, actions of the Christian faith. He wanted to say, hang in there, hang in there, because what you do really makes a difference, not only now, but for an eternity. In a, in a sense, Paul is kind of sending him out of the house, sending him out into the world, and he knew that they needed to be prepared for all of the challenges that are out there. And when my kids were small, at middle school, before my boys or Laura would go to uh, middle school dance, I would say to them, remember, you're a Burtness. There's all kinds of stuff you're going to see out there. There's all kinds of temptations that might come your way. But remember, you're a Burtness. That means you do some things. That means you don't do some other things. That's what Paul is doing with these beloved Christians at the Church of Ephesus. You are Christians. You were bought by the blood of Christ. There are some things you do, other things you don't even think about doing. The Nicolaitans, all those folks, don't bother with what they're saying because what you do with your body, it's not just your spirit, it's your body. It's the intertwining of the two. What you do makes a difference. Now, we just went through the... Um, 
armor of God. Remember how Paul was chained to a Roman guard, probably writing with his left, well, he's probably left-handed. Margaret says smarter people are left, well, Margaret's left-handed. So Paul was undoubtedly left-handed because, well, because smart people are left-handed, Margaret says. So he's writing with his left hand, being chained with his right hand to a prison guard, kind of looking over. He's got shoes, he's got a belt, he's got He's got a, a breastplate, all that stuff. And Paul's writing saying, okay, you got these things. You got this helmet. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have shoes that make for peace. Paul is using his current context to proclaim who Jesus was. Paul didn't see his circumstances as holding him down. Rather, he saw his dire circumstances as an opportunity to proclaim Christ. Same with us. Circumstances are not great right now in a whole lot of ways, and yet this is a time when we can proclaim Christ. I hope you've received that um, encouragement from this time in um, Ephesians. So as he's looking at him, he says, you know, as you go out there as a Christian in the world, or like a Burtness in the world, you got to have the proper equipment. Kind of like you don't go skiing in a Speedo, right? You don't lie on the beach in your winter coat. You don't play basketball in your scuba gear. You don't swim the 100 yard backstroke with the football uniform. You have to have the proper gear. That's what Paul wanted to provide them with, with this armor of God sending them out. So Paul says, once you got all this stuff, once you pray incessantly, intercessorily in the power of the Spirit, pray for me too, Paul says. Pray for me too, because I need to speak a word of boldness with the mystery of the gospel to which I am an ambassador in change. Pray for me, Paul says, that I may proclaim it boldly as I must speak. Then he says, okay, here's Tychicus who will tell you everything. He's a dear brother. He's a faithful minister. I'm sending him to you. Peace be with you. Love, faith, all of that. It's so wonderful. And he commends to them Tychicus, his dear brother. And Paul sent this letter with Tychicus to Ephesus. And as we said at the beginning, Remember some of the initial uh, drafts or copies of the letter didn't have the word Ephesus in there. It was meant to be a circular letter to be not only shared with Ephesus, but with other churches in the area and with churches through the ages like right now in 2020 as we're sharing this time together. Paul gives a final benediction there to his readers. He uses four words, faith, love, peace, and grace. Faith, love, peace, and grace. He says, peace be to the whole community and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who have an undying love for our Lord Jesus Christ. What a, what a wonderful way to end that letter and to end our time with Ephesians with those four important words, with peace and love and faith and grace. It's been a wonderful journey with you going through these 24 days through these six chapters of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to take a break uh, through the end of December. We have Advent coming up. We have online Wednesday and Sunday services. We're going to start to gather on November 22nd in person, see how all that goes. And then January 1st, we'll do something different. I'm not exactly sure what now. I have to have a little time to kind of think and pray about that. January, we'll start something different for that month. Then in February, Ash Wednesday is February 17th. We'll start something else then through Easter, 40 days there. And um, then we'll see how it all goes. But for the time being, I will put in uh, an email to you some of the links to the prior ones, the uh, Do Not Fear 60 Days, the Philippians, the other blog entries that I've done, the Gospel of Luke, um, the 168 of them now that are up online that you can have some refreshment um, during the next month and a half or so until January 1st when we start again. It's been a privilege to 
spend this time with you. Thanks so much for listening in. I hope it's been a time of growth in faith and love and knowledge about who Jesus is and his love for you. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, gracious God, for this wonderful letter of Ephesians. Our eyes have been opened to so many things, and we pray that you would never let us take these words of encouragement for granted again. God, I pray that each person who has gone through this study, that their hearts and minds have been touched by Paul's wonderful and encouraging word. And I pray that we might all be grounded in faith, faith and grace and love and peace and be grounded in Jesus and his love for us. Keep us ever and always close to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it's going to be a little bit, uh, six weeks, but I look forward to seeing you again. You take care. Bye-bye.